From Bunchlung Country, this is Sunday Mass with Bishop Greg Homie. of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let's once again with all of our hearts give ourselves to God as we stand in his presence. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ of mercy. Christ. You are word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to, to people, people of good will. We, we praise, praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We, we give you thanks you for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. If you wish, you can keep the commandments. To behave faithfully is within your power. He has set fire and water before you. Put out your hand to whichever you prefer. Man has life and death before him. Whichever a man likes better will be given to him. For vast is the wisdom of the Lord. He is almighty and all-seeing. His eyes are on those who fear him. He notes every action of man. He never commanded anyone to be godless. He has given no one permission to sin. The word of the Lord. Amen. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. Happy, happy are, are they, they who follow, follow the law of the Lord. They are happy whose life is blameless, who follow God's law. They are happy those who do his will, seeking him with all their hearts. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. You have laid down your precepts to be obeyed with care. May my footsteps be firm to obey your statutes. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. Bless your servant and I shall live and obey your word. Open my eyes that I may consider the wonders of your law. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. Teach me the demands of your statutes, and I will keep them to the end. Train me to observe your law, to keep it with my heart. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord.
second reading is a reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. We have a wisdom to offer those who have reached maturity, not a philosophy of our age, it is true, still less of the masters of our age, which are coming to their end. The hidden wisdom of God, which we teach in our mysteries, is the wisdom that God predestined to be for our glory before the ages began. It is a wisdom that none of the masters of this age have ever known, or they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. We teach what scripture calls the things that no eye has seen and no ear has heard, things beyond the mind of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. These are the very things that God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit reaches the depths of everything, even the depths of God. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, if your virtue grows no deeper than that of the scribes and Pharisees, you'll never get into the kingdom of heaven. You have learnt how it was said to your ancestors, you must not kill, and if anyone does kill, he must answer for it before the court. But I say to you, anyone who is angry with his brother will answer for it before the court. You have learnt how it was said, you must not commit adultery. But I say to you, if a man looks at a woman lustfully, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again, you have learnt how it was said to your ancestors, you must not break your oath, but must fulfil your oath to the Lord. But I say this to you, do not swear at all. All you need to say is yes, if you mean yes, and no, if you mean no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. I can remember very well many years ago when my father was in hospital dying and I would go in each day and spend time with him. When he, while he was able to eat, I'd bring him food and we'd sit there and talk. And one day when I'd taken dad some food, he started talking strangely about his mother, which he seldom did because his mother died when he was about 17. And he said to me, son, when you get to my age and life is running out, the one thing that you long for, he said, is I'd love to eat mum's food, my mother's cooking. I never forget my father saying that to me. And later pondering it, I thought to myself, it's not simply the way my grandmother cooked is why it was important for my dad but as life was coming to, to an end for him, it was the love that went into the food that my grandmother cooked for him. And so when he said, I long to eat my mother's cooking, there was that sense in which there was a longing for that love that the food somehow represented, but it, it wasn't really the food that was the issue. In today's gospel, and indeed next week's gospel, we have the beginning in Matthew's Gospel of Jesus indicating to us what it is which makes his teaching distinct from other teaching, which, might, which is what makes his teaching Christian as opposed to simply a repetition of what the Jewish teaching was. 
And the answer, to put it into a nutshell, is it's not the regulation that is important, but the love that is carried by that regulation. And his teaching to us is we abide by regulations because somehow in the regulations they carry the heart of what my teaching is, which is love. Much like what my father longed for, it wasn't to eat food cooked a certain way, but it was longing for the love that was in that cooking. And so we have some amazing things here. You've learned how it was said to our ancestors, you must not kill. And if anyone does kill, he will go before the court. But I say this to you, anyone who is angry with his brother will answer for it. And it's thou shalt not kill. For Jesus is not fundamentally about you shall not kill, but it's about you shall not operate in such a way that there is a denial of love for your neighbour. Because Jesus would have recognised thou shalt not kill fits within another commandment. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. And what does that mean? You could, in fact, kill somebody every day, but not raise a hand against the person. Because more important than the, than the physical um, statement that you shan't kill is that you shall not harm from within your heart. And it does make then that commandment much more than have you murdered or have you not murdered? Because anger in the heart can lead to murdering with the tongue. It can lead to so many things. And Jesus' teaching is purify your heart with love in your relationship with others. The next one, thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, there are many of us, including the, your bishop, who can say, well, I've never committed adultery. And yet that does not mean that my heart is loving in, in this regard, in this particular area. Because we can all look lustfully. We can all cry out for something. And it points to the fact, not that you haven't committed adultery, but that your heart is not pure in the way in which you love. It's the adulterous heart which leads to adultery. And therefore, that's where the commandment, Jesus' teaching goes below the regulation to what will bring about a failure in regard to that regulation. Lust in the heart is what leads to adultery. Anger in the heart is what leads to murder. And to simply, for Jesus, he says, I'm not sitting by you saying to me, I haven't done these things. Because just by not doing these things does not make you my disciple. Just by not doing something does not make you loving. You may never break any of the commandments, but you may never have loved. And the first thing we learn about Jesus' teaching today is, my teaching is about love. Let's listen to that and not rest in confidence on the fact that I've never done anything really wrong. Because if that's all you can say, it's possible that you've never done anything really right. Because doing something right is to be motivated by and to live by love. Let's stand and profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With a loving heart, let us bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For the Church, revealing God's hidden wisdom and teaching us saving truths in her mysteries. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. For renewed efforts to gain global peace and stability in those nations divided by hatred. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unemployed, underemployed workers and those facing layoffs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents, pastors and teachers handing on to our children the teachings of Christ and his church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are sick and bereaved may receive healing and acceptance through Christ and the intercession of St. Mary of the Cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead who would behold the things that no eye has seen and no ear has heard, especially Rose Huey, Robert Argent, Constance de Dassel, Elizabeth Carraher, Mary Gillies, Diane Miller, Denise Fields, Dorothy Tickle, Russell Acedillo, Maria Zapra, and Araceli Corvira. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord have sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. O Lord, may this oblation, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us 
over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim, proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection, resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Teresa, Saint John of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
where the leaf left under my roof, that only say the word and my soul shall be. And let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.